and welcome to another live stream. My name's Lawrence Mann, and you should be able to see me right now. Um, yep, and apparently you can. It's a little bit dark in here. There you go. No. Yep, it's a little bit dark in here. Never mind, eh? Just give me this window a bit. There we go. Whee. It's a little bit bad. Okay. So this is the illustration I was working on in the last live stream, which was last night. It started off as really basic sketch. The last live stream is now live. You can see that it's on my YouTube channel, which is www.youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Lawrence can draw. So it's Lawrence can draw basically. Um, and that started off just as a basic line drawing. And now it is, as you can see on the screen here, full colour. But it's still just a really rough sketch. And I'm going to draw for a couple of hours now and just keep working on it, basically. It's probably just going to be um, a really nice sketch by the end of this, hopefully. I, my normal illustrations take a couple of weeks. And, yeah. Obviously, it's not going to be a fully-fledged illustration by the end, but hopefully we'll get somewhere nice. I'm just going to take a quick look at my comments here. Move this out of the way for a second. Um, so, if anyone's out there, can you just chime in and let me know if you can hear me and see me alright? That'd be absolutely great. Just so I know that the stream is kind of functioning and working okay. That'd be absolutely Cracking, thank you. Tell you what, I'm just gonna move my Wacom around a bit so you're not getting blared out by the sun. There we go. I've got my Wacom on an Ergotron stand so I can move it around freely, but I'm not going to tilt it because then you're gonna be seeing all kinds of craziness and it's gonna look a bit psychedelic. It'll look like I've got a steady cam strapped to me. Right, so I'm just gonna continue on as I did before. I do everything on different layers so I can turn everything on and off. Um, this illustration was inspired by one of the spacesuit pictures that I saw while I was checking out image references for another illustration I was doing. I came across photographs of a spacesuit uh, that NASA, well, a company had created for NASA, I think, which was a body form fitting. Uh, spacesuit with all these lines across it and I thought it looked absolutely great and they're saying it's a spacesuit they're going to use for Mars um, it was also the inspiration for the spacesuit that he used on the Martian um, movie with Mark Wahlberg um, yeah so this took me about an hour and a half last night and I like it I'm happy with it but yeah it's just really rough at the moment but then again, that's, you know, it's kind of how I expected it to be. Hi, right, it's Modro. It's good to see you again. Um, so it's nice to kind of be in control of my own live stream today. No Aaron around. Not that that's a bad thing. I just mean that Aaron normally, you know, is in control. And he, so it's kind of all the onus is on him to do everything and I always feel a bit bad about that you know the fact that he has to set everything up you know and I just kind of just call in on Google Hangouts and it's like oh hi have you got everything set up yeah let's do this there so it's nice now if I can kind of do the live streams as well and take some of that pressure off of him I know, I think he's at home just chilling out and making his own videos today. But I think after a few of these, when I've got it up and running properly, then, uh, then I'll get Aaron over here on my channel. We'll do some hangouts over here. And maybe bring back Guess a Sketch. If people want that, I know we've had some requests for that. I'm glad it's working. Thank, thanks for letting me know that. 
because I've got the camera on as well as my screen capture. And I know it worked well last night. You know, I watched kind of the whole live stream just to make sure. But it's kind of one of the big reasons why I upped my um, my broadband and paid. You know, ultimately ended up paying more for my service. Even though I shouldn't have had to. You know, the service I was paying for was supposed to be good enough. But my provider wasn't really up to it. So a lot of what I'm going to zoom in here. I'm so used to staying in this small little space because me and Aaron both have to draw not on the same screen but on the same live space, live stream space. But now that I'm just now that it's only me you can see my whole screen so Normally with live streams, I'm, um, I don't watch a ton of other people's live streams, so I'm always kind of thinking, oh, what, you know, what should I do in the live stream? And it, it always just comes down to, oh, I'll, just, I'll just do whatever I fancy drawing, and hopefully that'll be good enough to attract people to just come and watch. it's weird because I'm quite happy if people want to suggest things but I have certain rules about my art which is that I don't do fan art I'm quite happy to draw stuff if I'm being paid to draw stuff like you know I'll do a most anything if a client's paying for it but I won't paint somebody else's intellectual property just for the fun of it because I can't put that in my portfolio I don't want to put that in my portfolio because then it makes me look like um, I'm a fan artist like I, I paint for fun, not for money. That's the the kind of difference for me. I want it to be clear that I'm a professional artist, that I paint for money. I'm a merc. <laughs> <laughs> and I think if the more professional you are, the less likely you are to have fun art in your portfolio. Adding in some extra extra lines here on this. Oops. See all the colours I'm picking are just random colours from around. I'm not using the colour wheel swatches, anything from over there. Yeah, making, um, just picking up on what Alex Modros just said there, making um, original art stretches your own imagination as well. And I really don't think you're going to get that kind of um, stretch of your own imagination from drawing anybody else's characters. You know, don't get me wrong, there's been times when I've been like, oh, I really want to get into... I really want to sit down and draw somebody else's characters. Because I do love other people's characters. And I do have a hankering to paint other people's characters sometimes. But 
I just don't because I don't, you know, I, I feel like I can't add them to my portfolio when it's done. And that's kind of bad, but it's just that level that everything I paint, I want to add to my portfolio. It's like this may not go into my portfolio. I know that because it's a YouTube painting. So the argument could be made that why, why wouldn't I just, you know, paint something a bit fan arty then, but I know that potential clients do look at my YouTube channel. So in that respect, I, I just don't want people thinking I'm a fan artist. I actually have got a video planned where I'm going to draw Iron Man. But that isn't a fan art thing. That sounds weird to say. I actually, um, there's a magazine that sold Marvel figurines. So it's like... Um, Every month there's a new magazine, and on every magazine there's a new figurine. And the first issue was Iron Man. And on the TV commercial it looked awesome, like super awesome. And obviously with these magazines, uh, the first issue was like £2, so like only a like four bucks or something. Um, so I got it. And every everyone after that is like ten pounds. So like fifteen bucks. Um yeah. The figure wasn't as good a quality as it was shown to be on the um on the T V ad. So I was a bit disappointed. But I got it anyway. Um, yeah, I didn't realise the quality of it until I opened the packaging. But. Here it is. That's the Iron Man figure. Tony Stark. Yeah. So I got that. And I'm going to do a video where I basically paint that. I draw, do a drawing from that. So I use that as an artist reference model. I actually wrote a letter to the company and said, yeah, it's not a great quality. You know, you, you made it look better on the TV ad than it actually is. Is this just like, have I got a dud model or something? And they wrote back like about three weeks later saying, oh, a bit sorry about that. We'll send you another one. And they sent me another one and it was worse. <laughs> So, I didn't say anything. I just thought, nah, never mind. Eh? I was going to subscribe and do like the entire series, draw the entire series. But, you know, I just thought that the quality of them isn't really good enough. So I just didn't bother. Which is a shame because I thought that would have made a, um, like a, I thought it would have made a really, really good YouTube series. Let me know what you think if you think that's like a nice idea for a video if you want to see that.
Just try and add as much detail and kind of make this belt, this rough collection of shapes into an actual... I could zoom in a lot closer so you can actually see. I'm straining my eyes. I'm like they're straining my eyes. This is a 27-inch Wacom, so I don't need to strain my eyes at all. You know, this is lovely and big now. You know, now that I've actually zoomed in, the detail looks rough. But this is what always happens. But if I don't do that, if I work really closely, if I work at this kind of close up the entire time, then the when I zoom out, it looks really messed up. You know, I did this yesterday on the face. I worked really uh, close up on the face and then when I zoomed out she looked like the elephant man it's just how it is you need to work at a certain distance you can't work as close up as you'd like it's a real shame because you kind of want to work close up you want to get all those edges perfectly crisp the first time but you can't do it I do have some nice ideas for videos. But one thing I wanted to do that I thought I would get some I thought I'd get some um kind of input for that I was surprised I didn't was I wanted to do some um I wanted to do some videos where um you know um I did some kind of, uh, I've forgotten the word. I looked at other people's artwork and kind of helped people out a bit with that. You know. Oh God, Modra, help me out here. Somebody. What's it called? <laughs> you know, a bit, uh, a bit of a Q&A session where I just kind of come in and help somebody out with their artwork. But yeah, I wanted to do a few of those. I did put out some feelers, but nobody got back to me yet. But if anyone's out there looking, critique. Just remember it, it's critique. So if anybody wants their portfolio or their work critiquing, let me know. I'm quite happy to do that. At the moment I'm still just using the standard brush. I'm just borrowing colours, just hitting the Alt key so I can borrow colours from around the around the canvas see there's a layer in here there we go, found it immediately. That's just the black inks. Like that. And I can just turn that on and off. So that was my original line sketch. And grab that as well. Bring a copy of it to the forefront. And why would I do that? Could even invert it. 
which looks slightly crazy. but there's something about it that looks really nice as well. I'm going to leave it off. But. What I do want to do, actually, is I want to start grabbing all of this I'm just going to turn this this one off for a second I'm going to grab everything else though um, ah. I do have a problem that I have that crazy layer stuck in there. It's okay. I don't think that crazy layer is going to kill me. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I can work around that. So I've got my background, I've got the crazy layer. Yeah, for right now, I can grab that layer, soften my brush, do that, turn up back this layer. I don't know No Man's Sky. Uh, it's Modra says the outfit reminds him a little bit of Soma on No Man's Sky. But I don't know No Man's Sky. Maybe I do. Is that an artist? I might well know them, but I just don't know the name. I'm bad like that. Right, there we go. The reason I wanted to do this was, I'm just going to grab that and copy that. It's because now I can go in with Photoshop's Blender brush. Actually, a pretty decent brush. You know, and this is this is the brush that's really going to help you out when it comes to turning a face into a face. You know, rather than just a, a paint, rather than just a sketch. This brush, if you're not used to using it, takes quite a bit of experimenting with. You know, it's not one of those brushes you just pick up and start using. I think the first time I ever used this brush, I was like, oh, this is brilliant. And then I went to use it again, and it was just like, it doesn't work, it's broken. It just didn't work for me the second time. But it worked perfectly for me the first time and I couldn't understand what it was or why. And I'd designed brushes before, so it was kind of like, what? Really didn't understand what it was. And still to this day, that kind of 
weirds me out. I'm not sure what I did wrong that day. I made her nose really big for some reason. Yeah, I've got a line on that layer. There we go. Must have been... Sometimes when you're drawing a line, and then you stop and go to draw another line somewhere else, sometimes you get like a little spirit line. I'm not sure how or why that happens. It's your brush doesn't totally disconnect. So you end up with a line from the top of the previous line to the bottom of the new line. And it will be a perfectly straight line as well. A weird. Because I don't draw with a really soft brush, my lines aren't blended. They're kind of choppy and hard. And it's nice in a way because I have that kind of concept arty feel. And I think a lot of artists want that. But in another way, it means my lines aren't as straight as I'd like them. And it looks like a drawing. So I come in with the blender brush. And it really helps it look more like a finished, polished piece. And realistically, I, I've just saved so many images from just being thrown in the bin or looking like a sketch. Like some some bits of images have gone from a doodle to the finished part of an image in two or three minutes because of this brush. Or blender brushes like it. You know. Corel Painter has amazing blender brushes. I will say that Photoshop's Blender Brush is actually really, really basic in comparison. But it's still, it's come a long way in a very, very short time. You know, um, they didn't have this brush for an amazingly long time. And I think people were actually starting to shout at them because they needed this brush so badly. But they created it and they did a really really good job to say that you know they don't have an array of blender brushes like painter they just have this blender brush and fair enough it can use all of their ABR brushes but you know it's, a, it's kind of a standard templated brush but the mechanics behind this brush work work really well Obviously, um, one thing about this brush is when you come in and use it, you will have to then come back in over the top of this brush and uh, redefine some hard lines. Like I've just used that to give that a really straight line across the top. But once I'm done, I can just swap back to my normal brush and then just redefine the hard lines. Now, what I could do, I've still got a pencil sketch right there, it's turned off, it's white, so I can just invert that again. I could do that, you know, and uh, do that to colour burn. Just done nothing. And it probably won't do nothing. I need something more like, you know, overlay or soft light. You know. It's making it more like a sketch again, which I don't want to do. 
that's the layer as it was. And that's it. Now that I've uh, done some blending work, and you can see the difference. It's subtle, but it's there. You know, it's definitely less sketchy. But it's it looks a bit blurred rather than um, rather than painted. But if I go back in and neaten up that detail with a harder line then it will start to look a lot better but that's what you kind of have to do with this kind of stuff is just spend the time and just keep working it and keep working it and keep working it notice that some of the stars have kept kind of crept through whoa crazy The blender likes to stay on the inside of things. It's really weird to use if you go on the on an outside of an edge. It's a good opportunity now that I've flattened her to actually sort out her outside edge as well. Just make sure you don't do the mistake that um, I did actually trap myself in quite often, which is flattening the character to the background. I do that more often than you think, considering that I'm a professional illustrator. You'd think that, you know, I wouldn't do things like that, but yeah, um, I can quite often do that. It's quite easy to sort out, so I'm not up bothered about it, but when you get working on a few hundred layers. It's not too big of a problem as, you know, quite often you'll never need to pull a character from the background. But just frustrates you because when you want to do a different little technique or a different little twitch here and there you find you've uh, stumped yourself in a corner so for as long as I can then I, I try not to do that I'm just going round an hour and Try and get rid of these fuzzy edges. You can see she's actually quite rough all the way around. It doesn't really worry me at this point, you know, but. One of those things, you know, uh, you end up going through stages of maintenance on an illustration. Where you just really want to go around and tidy up before you move on to the next little bit here and there. Sometimes these things are, you know, um, as Bob Ross calls them, happy accidents. But sometimes they just annoy the fuzz out here. There's another little connection line on that and I can not remove that because I'd be getting rid of whatever glows around it just have to live with that never mind go back to my normal brush for a second actually and just in a, a few areas that I wanted doing like try and get rid of this black line on the on the shoulder pad see my brush looks massive now the canvas that I'm working on is a decent size but 
Not too big. You alright, Arif? Nice. Thanks for turning up, mate. Oh, No Man's Sky is a game. Yes, I have heard of it then. I know what it is. Yeah, I know exactly what that is. Thank you, Modra. I can see the I can see the box in my mind now. Mm. What's my size of canvas? Image size is a ridiculous 9,000 pixels high, 400 DPI. Mm. Mm. In here. Why? Um, I always draw high res, always. And one of the one of the previous live streams that I did, um, I created a piece. Let me show you here. I created this piece. Load. I created this piece. It didn't get finished on the live stream, but it started and it got a fair chunk of the way through. That was the initial sketch. Um, and it got a fair way through. I think I just added the neck tattoos um, and maybe uh, some extra details and, you know, a bit of texture and everything else um, on the, you know, after the live stream. But this actually did really well because um, this ended up going for sale um, uh, an Olympian ended up tweeting about it to a friend of hers who she thought it looked like. He ended up getting a massive framed print of it. You know, and if it have, I'd have only ever made it low res for YouTube, then nothing would have happened. But because I made it big in the first place, then yeah, you know, this guy was able to get like a, a really nice giant framed copy. You know, um, and his friends surprised him with that. You know, so it was nice. But I always work high risk because you never know what's going to happen. You know, you could always try and redraw something, but these days all machines can handle high res. So why not? Why not just go for it? The canvas that I'm working in is kind of, I won't call it a base canvas, I don't save base canvases or anything like that. It's more of, um, I open up a previous drawing and then just scrap it, save it as something new. I think this actually was that drawing, a JPEG of that drawing, and I just scrapped it and saved it. You know. Um, and that's, you know. That's the best way to go around it. A lot of people save um, templates and things like that, but I tend to find it's easiest just to dig in my files, find the last one that worked well, and go from there. Because I can always modify them and change them, and you know, if specs out there change as well. So there's a new printer I start using. And that printer says, oh we want things in this colour setup or they change the size slightly on me. I don't have to change templates. You know. That all works. And I'm happy. Whereas if you create a template, then it's another file you have to worry about. So, you know, I used to create 
templates and things like that and other people used to use them back when I used to have a full time job and it worked out great and a point you could call it laziness in a way but I found those things could jump up and bite you in the ass you know I just found after years of molding myself into this comfy sofa of a of a working method you know my day-to-day -day regime of let's play it safe and see what happens and it really does work if you plan everything out to the nth degree yeah that doesn't work because other people don't don't plan everything out to the nth degree so doing all this template kind of stuff meh in a perfect world it would oops where's that blue I like that blue but that's all we needed that blue there's lines everywhere <laughs> come here eraser I'm going to use you Slightly abuse you. There we go. Oh no, I wanted those lines. Yeah, it was just those lines I didn't want. There we go. No. Yeah. There. Oh, that's a pencil. I never use pencil. It's funny. Um... In all my years, I don't think I've ever seriously used the pencil tool. <laughs> Alex Modro says YouTube is a great place you can become famous for anything part of me felt like that was a dig then <laughs> but yeah yeah you really can be told my battery is low But isn't that what people want from YouTube? Like people want to be famous. People have always wanted fame or at least infamy. People have always had it in for me. Ha ha ha. Just bring that blue stripe back a bit. So I can always bring back this bl blender brush. I'm trying to paint all this stuff, but. I know all the base colours are here, so. The thing is, on this gold, I probably need to just. Use the blender brush and get it really, really overly blended.
Have I used Blender the software? Um, not for a long, long time. I mean, like years. Has it gotten any better? I mean, when I used it, it wasn't really that great. It was okay, but it wasn't, you know, I didn't think it was really worth using. It was, it was kind of like, oh, in a few years' time, this might be good. And I just never went back to it. <laughs> Part of me thinks, as an artist, there's so much software to use, you, don't, you just try not to use too much. Because otherwise you go mad. But the most part of me tries to use as much as possible because I really just you know I'm trying to make my art as good as it can be so I try and experiment but seriously after playing with a lot of software you play with something for five minutes and you know you're like nah no good bye you walk away you can tell after five minutes of playing with something if it's absolute rubbish or if it's just a cheap copy of something else and 99% of software out there is just a cheap copy of Photoshop or just a cheap copy of something else. Maybe they've got one tool in there that is kind of unique but mm, for the most part, no, they've just created their own version. Which is kind of a cut down version anyway. You know. Why? Because they want to make a bit of the profit that, you know, Photoshop or Painter is making. You know. Or maybe because they think they could do a better job uh, making it for a certain platform. You know, for like the iPad or something like that. And you just think, well, they've done a decent job. But do I need it? No. And that's where it comes for me. You know. I use the Surface Book. And I use the, uh, the Mac here. And to be honest, the Mac here is a bit old. And I've been using Macs for years, but somebody asked me on Twitter last night, what's better, the Surface Book or the Mac for artists? And I was like, well, Macs are great, but Macs, they don't make Macs for artists anymore. They used to concentrate on designers, but they don't. Not anymore. Apple make watches and they make phones. You know, there's no point buying a MacBook when you can have a surface that you can draw on. You know, if you get a MacBook, then you buy a Wacom as well. And I think that's a brilliant idea. But if you're looking for a portable device, then you buy a surface. You know. If I was buying a whole new setup now, I would get a top of the range surface and a Wacom. Because I'd have my Wacom in the studio and my surface I'd just take around with me and hook up to my Wacom when I got back to the studio. You know, it's easy as that. undo 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 so just reading comments oh 
Oh, I'm not learning. Oh, yeah. Blender can do animations, video editing, 3D modeling, games. I am not. I do you know something? I literally just started learning video animation, um, <laughs> learning animation a few months ago. I've I've been doing video editing for over a year now since I started doing YouTube. Right, I've had my channel for over a year now, um, and yeah, so. I've been doing video editing since then. Started off all in Camtasia, and this year, this year, I started like Camtasia crashes all the time. I'm like sick and tired of it. I know on the twentieth of this month they're launching Camtasia Nine, whatever. I'm not gonna buy that, uh, though. I think it will just be subscription based. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not gonna buy that. So. Um, I moved to Premiere. Premiere is great. I've got the full Adobe Suite anyway. And love it to bits. Premiere is so much better than Camtasia. Camtasia for the Mac anyway is rubbish because you've got this whole problem of it only has half of the things in it that Camtasia for the PC has. But they still want like the same amount of money off you. And if you're like me and you use Macs and PC, they only let you have it on one machine. Despite paying for it it's like they want you to pay twice and oh, no 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 but so I, I know video editing in Camtasia and I know it for Premiere um, a couple of months ago I started learning animation and at the same time I started learning motion capture animation why? I was bored one weekend I've gotten fairly good at it you know, uh, this is all in After Effects and in uh, a new program called Character Animator, which is the motion capture one. It's amazing. Lots of fun. Really enjoying it. Um, but I'm not going, I'm not going to learn animation in something else. <laughs> I'll be dragged out of the building kicking and screaming before it happens. I have seen, yeah, I've seen some stuff of yours, uh, Modra, and you've got some really, really cool stuff. I, I have watched, uh, watched some stuff. Uh, what was I going to say? No, um, I was going to say something else about the. Um, oops, should get this line back in. Yeah, so I learn video animation and um, sorry, video editing and animation. What else? Um, and games. Um, I do some game stuff from time to time, but only. You know, illustration for games, uh, character designs, stuff like that, concept art. I don't know about actually creating games. I did think I'd love to build some basic games, but with so much on my plate, I don't think I'd have time to actually do it. I've got a friend who I think would quite happily try and bully me into it, but yeah, I haven't got the time. If it was, it's a shame After Effects can't do it as well. If After Effects could do it for you, you know, if you could just give that commands. And I know Adobe's got some programs that can do it. Years ago, I actually learned a program that could do it. And it, it was in a big rivalry with Flash. Um, can't remember the name of it now. But we all thought that this other program was going to win. And it didn't. And Flash won. Flash became the big thing and this other one just went out of business. And when Flash won... 
me and my friends just kind of stopped doing any of this stuff. And that's why I can't do any of that stuff anymore. If I could, that'd be awesome. Yeah, see, colour picker keeps getting stuck on. I'm happy with the way this is looking, sir. It's a bit fugly in places. But it's getting there, slowly and surely. The game just seems like so much work though. I know game developers and they, you know, they spend like a year or so just working on bits of a game. And it's kind of like, that would kill me. Sometimes I feel like saying, you know, why don't you five guys all work together and create a mega super game rather than all working on your own individual games? And it's because they all want to share the profit. Uh, sorry, they don't want to share the profit from their games. They all want to keep the profit from their own individual games. Whereas if they all work together, then they'd have a better game, so they'd have more profit. But they don't see it that way. They just see like their own game and think, oh, this might be like super mega, mega fantastic and it might hit the jackpot. It's like they wouldn't buy a lottery ticket with you because what happens if that lottery ticket wins? They don't want to share the profit. But what they don't realise is that if they all club together and you know, all buy five lottery tickets together, then they've got a higher chance of sharing, you know. But, and that's that's my kind of argument for it, but they don't want to do that, and that's fine. I kind of respect that, and I get that. But for me, it's kind of... I don't want to put in that many man hours onto a project because I know ultimately is it going to pay off it may do and even if it does I'm still going to have to front that much time going in and can I afford to front that much time going in probably not that's the real issue, is how much time can you afford to put in, in the beginning. I actually have a family now, and it's, yeah, it's one of those things. You can't afford to just say, oh, I'm going to put in, like, X amount of time. It's a bummer. If I'd have thought of a lot of this stuff back when I was in uni. You know, this is why you hear of all these like 17 year old millionaires. Because they've got the time to just sit at the parents' house. And work on stuff. Without having to pay mortgages. 
Oh, can you see that in the background? Yeah, my uh, V for Vendetta mask. Yeah. I got that, um, I got that as a birthday gift. I'm not alluding to be a member of Anonymous or anything. I don't want anyone thinking, you know, spend my nights being a hacker. Who would do such a thing? Obviously, I can not condone such actions. But yeah, everybody loves the uh <laughs> everybody loves the fifth of November. Have you seen some of the freaky copy masks out there? Some of them are just scary. There we go, that hand's looking a lot better. Sorry, I breathed really loudly then. Let's to clean up this Union Jack. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. This was the last thing I did on the live stream before. Was just adding in this and a couple other things. That's why it's really flaky and quick. go if anyone has any questions feel free to chime in more than happy to answer normally really lazy on live streams in the fact that I uh, leave Aaron to do the comments it's normally only it's not laziness as such I just forget to uh, open the comments on the live stream before we go live and it's kind of hard to do things like that mid stream
drawing symmetrically. Um, yeah, it is. It can be harder, but it can be easier. If you use Corel Painter, it has a symmetry tool built in. So you pull the dotted lines. Um, no, I, I won't open it now because I hate opening programs during a stream. Um, it has kind of dotted lines. Oops. Yeah, it has these kind of dotted lines that you can add to the canvas and um, you know you can choose whether you have horizontal vertical or both whatever and um, basically you decide where on the canvas they are and you just draw one side of that line and it draws the rest which is really really cool. In Photoshop though if you want to do symmetrical just draw one half and then copy and paste it and flip it. That's what I do. Uh, it always works for me. I generally find as well um, that another good trick to do is once you've copy and pasted it, flipped it you know, kind of put it together. Another cool trick is just to grab your two halves and kind of warp them a touch so that it's not completely symmetrical anymore. That way, um, the eye doesn't like things that are completely symmetrical. It's because your eye you're a hunter by trade or you're a scavenger that's looking out for things that are hunting you either way you cut it your eye is always on the lookout and you don't want to see or you do want to see faces your eye is always looking for faces in things so it's kind of um it's one of those things. If your eyes always looking for faces, it will always look for symmetrical patterns and objects. And for some reason, you can kind of tell when something's unnatural. And it works really, really well. If you just make something a bit squiff, it just makes it look a bit more natural. It's like if the lines in something are too sharp. Makes it look fake. You just put the blur tool on. Blur something. makes it look a bit more natural that's why the face looked more natural when I used the uh, when I used the the good old mixer brush there There we go.
Let's zoom out. It's been a while since I zoomed out. Here we go, it's looking okay. You know what, I'm just gonna been working on detail for so long now. Okay, Modra, I'll see you later. Nova asks, what is your preference on pixel art? Um, you mean, do I like pixel art? Yeah. Um, of course I do. Um, I've got a friend who makes pixel art games. Um, his stuff, um, well, his stuff is called Arif Games. Um, he makes some very cool pixel art games. Uh, I love pixel art. I just... Uh, I haven't made any in such a long time. It's not my particular style, but I do enjoy it. Uh, it's just like a lot of different styles. I don't do it myself, but I do enjoy looking at it quite a lot. And there are some really, really talented artists out there who do it. You know, it's it's just one of those things. I think there are some people who are just, you look at it and you think, yeah, that's that's an amazing talent. But it's like anything else. The longer you spend on something, the, the better you will be at that. You know, and I see... I, I see some people who just, yeah, kind of, okay. But, yeah, there, I mean, there are some just amazingly talented people out there who do who do some of that stuff. I remember seeing some stuff um, maybe about 10 years ago, and they were creating entire cityscapes in it, and it was that was really beautiful. But um, I did see uh, kind of a bit of a resurgence in it quite recently. That was really nice. Is that is that the kind of stuff you do, Nova? Cool. I'll check out your channel later. If you got any stuff up on there.
Do you use a Wacom for that? What programs do you use for pixel art? Looks really weird the way I've drawn that last couple of bits. There we go. There we go, it's a bit better. Kind of want to change some of this background color as well, so I'm just gonna use a very large brush, uh, pick that background color and then just change bits. doing that subtly to well I like that green Pixen I don't know that one because there's been a couple of times where I've wanted to like do a tiny bit of pixel art Photoshop's not really set up to do that you cannot do that in Coral Painter um, so yeah there's been a couple of times I thought well, I'll, I'll give this a go but yeah I don't know any pixel art you know, um, you can do it in Photoshop, and when I've done it in the past, I've done it in Photoshop. But yeah, I know there are some programs out there to specifically do it. I'll check that out. Cheers for that. It's kind of a blow in there. There we go. I'm liking the kind of free colours now. I have to have a bit more of that blue. There we go. Not so subtle now. But I want another layer, and I want white. My name's White. And I'm going to have a big rocket blast. Like, I love the way that when you use an absolutely massive brush, Photoshop kind of screams at you for a second. Going, why are you using that brush? But then again, I am using like a 400 DPI canvas and, you know, it's 9,000 pixels. So I'm not blaming Photoshop on my Mac or anything. absolutely quite normal for my Mac to kind of have a go at me like that. I'm just going through the colour blending modes now to to kind of find something. No, I think it actually worked best on on normal. I'm just going to take the opacity down now though. You know what? Change that back to over there. Let's try moving that layer down or around. Let's 
It's a really odd one. All right, we're just going to get rid of that. Well, yeah, it wasn't working so well. Maybe just try one up front, adding a bit more glow to these lights. I can still feel Photoshop screaming at me. Let's just have a little smoky break while that's happening. One light is dimmer than the other. Whoa, massively bright. Never mind. Um, yeah, now Photoshop's on a break. <laughs> oh dear. Didn't work. There we go. Undo, undo, undo. Redo. Undo, undo. Undo. One, one step too far in either direction. Right, tell you what. Screen. Overlay. Overlay looks awful. Overlay looks like I drew this in the 90s. Let's go for screen, but we'll turn it right down. I'm going to turn it off for now, but I'm going to come back to it. That layer needs the same treatment anyway. Right. I'll tell you what I am gonna do. I'm gonna knock out some of that. I'm gonna make her a bit lighter. And I'm gonna knock out some of the colour. Just so she's not too pow. There we go, that's looking a bit better. Might do the same in the background. Just desaturate it a bit. Uh, 
and I might just take that background a bit. Just because overall that is a tad too dark. There we go. That's looking better. I can actually ramp this up so well. Ramp this up so we actually have some uh, some proper black in there, like that. But I just don't want it, you know, being too black. Although that, there's something really nice about that. But I just don't want it being, you know. Can't get that out of my head now. Yeah, there's something nice about that. The silhouettiness. You know what? We're going to go with it. We are. We're going to go with that. done this on a separate layer so I can just come in with my eraser and just take out the parts that I want to keep like I could give her hair like that with the eraser We just need to find like all the bits that the the light would be hitting. So we can go around like the edge of her a bit more. Bring out some of these features. just to bring that silhouette back at the top of her belt Just 
bring up this brush a bit and bring a bit more of our arm in here. There we go. And a bit of that side in as well. I'm just going to bring that brush up to be quite big. So I can just bring a bit of a, a stomach in. Now our arms are going slightly behind us so I don't need to worry about that. But this knee, this leg here, I'm going to actually bring a bit of that in. Just because that's coming forwards. So just to show that that arm there, uh, that leg there is coming forwards. I'm just going to bring that out of the shadow. But I'm going to keep the other one back. That's looking quite nice. See the difference that made? If I just control zero or command zero, that was it. And that's it now. I do want to just take off a bit more of the face there. Because what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to flatten that oops not those layers those layers there it's alright because I've still got it saved there is a layer that's untouched um, I'm going to copy and paste that layer again and keep another layer copy of that I'm going to go into liquify. And first thing I'm going to do is just boost the size of this. Um Now, this is the content aware uh, liquify, the face aware. So, this should, there you go, look at that. You can see it recognizes a face in there. How cool is that? This is a drawing, this is not a photograph. So, I can say, right, there you go, make her chin bigger or smaller. And her chin's a bit too big, so I'm going to make it a bit smaller. I'm going to say make the nose width a bit smaller. Upper lip. Can we make that a bit, a bit smaller? See, it won't be able to do this perfectly because... It's a drawing, but it can do a good enough job for me then to go back, but it can do quite a good job. So let's go into the eyes and say I want the eyes to be a bit bigger. Eye width, no, they were fine where they were. Eye till, oh, that's creepy. And they were fine where they were. Eye distance, oh, creepy again. I like that though. There's been loads of times where I've done a drawing and the eyes have been, you know, a bit too far apart or a bit too near. That's great. Okay, so. That's the eyes. I wish they could do eye matching. So that's the nose. The only thing is the filter, my wish. Mouth height. Ooh, hello. Hi, how are you doing? I can almost do animation. Hello, I'm an astronaut. Hi. 
This is really creepy. This is probably out of sync for you guys, but I'm having lots of fun. Hi, Kevin. How you doing? Um, yeah, you probably have just tuned in at a really weird time. I'm using the content aware um, liquify in Photoshop. Jolan, I can make it really thin or fat. So that's where she was. Might bulk her out a little bit. She's an astronaut. She can take it. Forehead. <laughs> He's recognising the helmet as her forehead. Um, it's fine. Um, yeah, whatever, it was fine as it was. Um, Oh, I can give her a bigger lower lip. Oh, and don't really want to make that lips any bigger. Oops. Oh, creepy, I can make a smile. I'd kind of given it a little bit of a twingy smile anyway. But this really deforms it in a weird way. But like I say, I think that's just because it's a drawing and not a photograph. This is great. I love this. They've really, really done a great job with this. You know, to say that it works this well on the drawing. Yeah, you could just. This means you don't even have to be that, you know, kind of accurate anymore. And just come in here and kind of have a go of it. Okay, quit out of that. It was fun. It was swell, but the swelling's gone down. That was it. And redo. And redo. And it didn't look like too much, but you know, it's kind of there and it works. So for subtle changes, I really like it. I think it's still better to obviously go in and do this all by eye. He says, as he's drawing an eye.
It's like it could only bring the nose in so far. And I actually wanted it brought in a little further. And if your nose is uneven, then it's never going to be able to sort that out anyway. Because it, it just presumes the nose is even. Because it presumes it's working on a photograph. Because it, Photoshop is for retouching photographs. That's why it's called Photoshop, not Illustrating Shop. one of those things where illustrators have kind of just used a package for so long that we presume it's for us and it's really not you know I know people at Adobe And, you know, they do have us illustrators in mind with a lot of the stuff they do. But at the end of the day, there's a lot more photographers that use this. And I mean a lot more. You know, you think there's a lot of illustrators out there using this, but... Now, realistically, there's a lot more photographers. So. Thanks, Kevin. Glad you like it. Stick around, hopefully she'll get better. Right, I'm going to just do something now. Bit odd. Huh. No pixels are more than 50% selected. The selection edges will be will not be visible. Yes. Okay. Ah. Right. I 
I know what that was. It's because I was using it on a tilted angle. And it didn't like me. Alright, copy, paste. This is in an effort to kind of correct the eye. To get both eyes to match. So what I'm going to do is if I match up the face here like that, grab my lasso tool if I come down the face, kind of half and half Like that Actually, come under there so all the stuff I don't want there we go so that back to zero see that is the first half and half see it's a bit misaligned it's fine. Let's realign that so the nose is a bit more. There we go. And this is what I was saying earlier. I set that a bit more squiffy so it's not perfect. There we go. Now I just grab my my brush thanks for sticking with me guys and uh, remember to subscribe by the way My raised brush is not being happy with me. At the moment it's just floating in the corner. It's because it's set to a large size. There we go. Any minute now. At the moment she's looking very wicked witch. Um, the space suits, the new Mars space suits that they're building, the skin tight ones have green visors, and I love that. Um, why is this taking so long? Hope Photoshop's not gonna crash on me. Very rarely does, but I do work in incredibly large file sizes. Oh, I said this is 400 dpi at uh, 9000 pixels high. Oh, I just. Oh, I was going to say we'll wait around until this is ready. But no, it's gone again. It will correct itself. I don't think it's going to crash. It's just going to take a long time. Mm. hopefully the stream's still going well let me know hey there we go <laughs> and all I have to do now is just fluff the edge a little bit to blend that in that's all I needed to do with that eraser brush the only trouble is now the reflection on the eye is mirrored. So I just grab a new brush. Go 
in. Oops, grab a new brush. Make it nice and small. Go in and kind of copy these reflections to the other side. Kind of mirror the whole eye here. I could actually just copy this and flip it, but where's the fun in that? I can only copy set a certain bit of it and flip it. I can't do the whole eye, obviously. Like that. Now it's mirrored properly and that looks okay. Um, obviously it's best as well if I don't have the whole thing mirrored. So if I just get rid of her cheek there and the forehead, could even do the chin. That looks better. I do want to just draw back in a bit of that cheekbone though. Because now her face looks a bit fat. Her face looks really squiffy now though, but again that's not a problem. I could use the content aware, but I'm not going to. And this good old fashioned way, which is to copy and paste elements. The reason I'm doing this is just because some of you guys out there won't have the Let's Photoshop and you might want to know how to fix stuff like this easily and quickly. And it's really This simple. See that nose is now on a separate layer. And the good thing about doing this as well is the fact that I'm now making the um the face less symmetrical. Which is always a good thing. You know, uh, you always want the face to be symmetrical in its um, in its shape, but not in its detail. You know, like the shadows it casts, etc. Now I'm just drawing a face, but normally I would have a reference image. Because faces, yeah, faces you want to get right more often than not. So uh, make sure you have a good reference image to hand. You know, find a face you like, find a model you like, find something you like and stick with it. You know, I always find a good reference image for a face. Sometimes I might take a photo of my own face and use that.
Depends exactly kind of what I need it for. If anyone has any questions, feel free to shout them out. Some more shadow over this nose so it doesn't look as big. <laughs> I always tend to put highlight the nose, and that can be a problem because if you highlight the nose too much, it makes the nose look massive. So, uh, you know, it's the same with the chin. You can highlight something too much, and then it, it just starts to look stupid and silly. You know, um, shadow in a lot of cases can be better than highlights. If you think you want something to stand out more, make other things stand out less. Again, like I did earlier, just going back to my uh, blender brush. One thing is about the blender brush that you will need it to uh, you will need everything to be on the same layer it's always better to work with a slightly bigger blender brush than you need and if you're working on a drawing tablet then it's okay because with a Wacom if the brush circle is this big, you're probably only using, you know, kind of half of that as, you know, because you're painting with the tip. It's like a real brush. You know, your, your paintbrush might be huge, but you can still just dab away with it at the tip if you're using the brush lightly. You know, you're not always using the whole brush. And it's better to use it lightly rather than really scrape hard with your brush okay so I'm going to turn these other layers back on See what we can see. Oops. And the zoom out. Wow, the face is just weird. <laughs> it looks okay, her eyes are maybe a bit too you know, um, dark, uh, sorry, bright, but that's fine, I can fix that in a jiffy.
There we go. Gonna add in some shadows. I was doing this the whole time anyway, but you know, I've kind of come back to this face a million and one times before. Now the face just really doesn't feel real to me. A lot of times on an illustration I'll do this and then just scrap the face and start again. And I'm kind of thinking of doing that now. <laughs> But never mind. Oh, that was a big issue, the eyebrows. I didn't notice that. The eyebrows were very arched. Immediately helped the painting look better. Just looks more like a real person now. It's funny because, you know, um, I, I didn't consider this to be, you know, the, the head to be a major part of this, but this is what happens. I think as well her chin is just horrendously big. There we go.
That's looking better. There, she's starting to look a bit more like a real woman. I think as well, less definition around the giant chin. Certainly helping. I say that and then I draw a defining line. <laughs> it's weird because that's, that's kind of what you want to do there. You want to add these lines in. No, I need to use that blender brush again, otherwise I've just got a, a weird messy mash. There we go. Back to that blender brush. Just so I can get some blending in there. See, the problem is when I kick that layer on. So I think what I have to do is grab that layer and actually take that layer out of commission over the top of the face. That looks weird without it. Maybe if I just lessen it like that. Cool. Um, from over here, she looks really squinty eyed. Turn off this layer again. And that's just because the um, the little bits of glow there. You know, they're barely anything, but there we go. Right, fine, I no longer care about the first. Moving on from the first. <laughs> Otherwise we'll be here all day. You know what, that was the original sketch. And the face looks fine there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that section of it, copy, 
paste. Turn the sketch off. Can I invert that? No. But I'll tell you what I can do. Overlay it and turn it right down. There we go. Instantly, her face looks better. I bet if I put that there, See, her face looks a lot better just for having the original sketch put over the top. Just neaten up that. Nose and lips. Like a couple of bits there. Yeah, it looks better instantly. What was that? Oh yeah, that's fine. I'll flatten that. <laughs> Don't worry, you've not gone mental. I'm just, after a while of looking at an image, you want to change your perspective on it. So I tend to find that doing something like this really helps you to, you know, um, really helps you to come up with a new way of looking at an image that you're working on change up an image and come up with some new ideas on how to create a better, Im better image. And often just adding a colour over the top you can come up with some really really nice stuff. This can feel a bit psychedelic. The difference one is really interesting. Obviously when you go too high it's really bizarre but really low and you get something really interesting. Same with exclusion. Subtract is really nice. Divide looks awful halfway. Mm, not keen with it either way. Let's go back to subtract. There's something interesting there. I'd leave it on subtract and I'm kind of tempted to say let's open that up and go through the colours. Like we had it on that blue. Hmm. We're not really getting anything too interesting. Try exclusion and try changing the colours. 
It's more of a weird colour wash. Okay. Difference was interesting. But again, this was like a weird colour wash. I do like this though. There's something really nice about it. It's what it does to the lights on her overhead. Like, at some point it actually looks really underwater. I really like that. I'm tempted to say, you know, when you drop it down low. Let's go back to that blue. That's where it was the best. But it's still too, still too much. And if I drop it down too low, then it's not noticeable. There's no kind of midway point where it looks really good. There will be something here though that really helps. There always is. Dissolve. I hate that layer effect. I wish they'd move it down to the bottom. Interesting. Again, going back into difference and all that, but whoa. No, I'll just leave it off then. Right. On that note, I am going to leave this here for this live stream. It's been 2 hours and 20 minutes and I really need the toilet. Thanks for joining me and I will bung this up on YouTube very, very soon. I'll do another one where I might continue this or do something else. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this um, and I hope you like this piece. I shall see you very, very shortly. Thanks for joining me. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to look at my website, which is lawrenceman.co.uk for all of my latest pieces. And I shall see you very, very soon. Thanks a lot, and thanks for watching. Just knock my nerds over. Do do stop streaming. Bye bye.